Cemetery, also known as the Emo Max Mofo, or just that one friend that you showed Lil Pete for the first time and now he makes that his entire personality, is a rapper. Well, sort of, his music more so sounds like the audio version of a deep fried meme combined with whatever music Anthony Fantana would probably put on while he was having but despite that, he's a pretty popular guy who's managed to work his way up in the music industry and crafted himself quite a career. And after hearing all the praise he's gotten at grade A in recent years, I knew that I had to look into him. So let's talk about the story of Cemetery. Not much is known about Cemetery's early life, including his real name. It's thought to be Zane Steckler, but I'm not sure if that's actually confirmed because it seems like the guy has taken a real effort to cover up his past, leading many to speculate he's hiding something he doesn't want the world to find out. But honestly, I disagree with that. I really think the only reason that this guy tries to hide his past is just because he's kind of boring. He probably never really did a whole lot before he started making music. He grew up in a place that really doesn't have a lot going on called Granite Bay, California. Raised in a pretty basic upper middle class household, his dad was a jingle maker, even doing music work for the first Pokemon movie, and his mother was an artist. He has younger brothers, and he describes the area he grew up in as fairly rednecky. His family would always go to church, but you could probably tell just by looking at Cemetery, he rejected religion pretty hard. He would instead spend his time listening to music from artists like Black Cray, Chief Keef, and other members of the early SoundCloud wave. When it comes to his school days, they're pretty mundane, and he even describes them as being boring. It's almost certain that this kid was bullied throughout high school, made evident by his inflated ego, unwillingness to go to school dances or participate in any school activities and he describes the whole experience as stupid he even called the other kids he went to school with losers who peaked in high school and they'll never be remembered this is the average defense mechanism of a bullied youth most people manage to shake this off by their early 20s but seeing as how he's kind of famous now he's probably going to stay emotionally stunted for quite a while to come but i mean whatever it fits with his anarchist persona and it appeals to his fan base that's also comprised of a similarly bullied population so he made it work i actually think it's a great thing because those kids also need music to bump under the stairs by the cafeteria too so he filled a niche. Cemetery started creating beats around the age of 14 before going full on into rapping after realizing that nobody wanted to use his beats. Okay, that's not totally fair. He actually did manage to produce a few tracks for some more underground artists, so we do have to give him that. He also managed to team up with his one friend at the time known as Ghost Mountain, forming the group known as Haunted Mount, and they dropped absolutely nothing. It seems like Cemetery had big dreams of being a rapper, but no actual way of reaching those dreams, so he packed his bags and went to college. But lucky for him, COVID would come along not long after and shut down his campus, giving him free reign to start pursuing his dreams. He created his first few tracks in hopes of emulating young Lean and filling that absent spot in the genre left behind after Lean started to change up his style. His first project was called Only For Real Emos, comprised of a bunch of chopped and screwed songs that were popular at the time, but his first real project was called Gravehouse. This was a collaboration project created with Ghost Mountain, and surprisingly, the weird sound the two were creating must have scratched a very specific itch in the world of SoundCloud because their music actually started to pick up steam. With one song in particular, called Nevada becoming the biggest hit on the track list and honestly I listened to it and it's pretty okay. It kind of sounds like if you put on Come Over When You're Sober Part 2 by Lil Peep and then played it underwater which is pretty high praise I know. This release was followed up by his first installment in the Rainbow Bridge series which gained him some clout in the world of horrorcore and he began doing interviews with small publications all over the internet. In the following years he dropped three more projects called Hundred Acre Wrist with Ghost Mountain as well as Rainbow Bridge 2 and Warboy which all did extremely well despite the fact that some felt that Rainbow Bridge 2 was kind of a disappointing follow-up to the first. Unfortunately though, things couldn't stay good forever because friction began to form between the members of Haunted Mound after they realized they weren't on the same page musically and in lifestyle. It seems like Ghost Mound only wanted to make music for fun, seeing it as a fulfilling pastime but not wanting to put all his eggs into one basket, whereas Cemetery already saw himself as a big time rapper and wanted Ghost to treat him as such. He would expect constant praise and admiration from his group member and he would even belittle Ghost Mountain every chance that he got, even though Ghost was actually the one that was writing all the lyrics at the time and eventually he just had enough of the power trip that Cemetery was on so he decided to leave the groups in hope of pursuing a career in film. Which of course Cemetery was fine with, thanking his friend for all the time he had put into their music and wished them a happy future. Now nah, I'm just kidding, he instead chose to shit talk Ghost any chance he could, ruined his entire chance of ever having a musical career and deleted all the prior music the two had done before. Not long after that Ghost Mountain SoundCloud was wiped clean as well and he would completely disappear off the internet. So without the support of his partner and friend 
time, Cemetery's lyrical quality started to suffer. So he had to look to his former collaborators for help, someone that he had actually produced a song for in the past named Juju, a Scottish rapper who took Cemetery under his wing for a time. But that didn't really last that long, and it would also fall apart after Cemetery became extremely controlling over Juju and tried to tell him who he could and couldn't hang out with, and of course, Juju being older and at the time more successful, told Cemetery to screw off, leaving Cemetery to once again delete all their music and start to shit talk him online. So with no collaborators left to help him make music and the harsh criticism of his peers freshly in his mind, he began searching the internet for people who could give him the respect he rightly deserved and would treat him as a god, or even a, hmm, supreme gentleman maybe? If you get that reference, you're part of the problem. And who better to give him the respect he rightly deserves than his own fans? This is when he discovered two supporters of his named Buckshot and Owen, who were creating edits for his songs. He would quickly connect with them, edit them to his group, and the good times started rolling. He dropped Rainbow Bridge 3 to critical acclaim from both Anthony Fantano and Brad Taste of Music, landed a Masked Gorilla podcast where he spoke on his past collaborators, added another member to his group named Hackle, and dropped his Screaming Forest mixtape. And even better than all that, he started blowing up on TikTok with the song Bunny Soup. But things weren't all good for the young Simi and Jimmy fan, because soon criticism would come knocking on his door once again. When a YouTuber known as Gatsu dropped a video on Cemetery that was slightly, and I do mean slightly, critical of him, that also had a claim that stated Cemetery's dad had done music for the first Pokemon movie. This was absolutely awful. It cast a doubt on the authenticity of Cemetery's come up, so in a Hail Mary move to avoid all criticism whatsoever, Cemetery copyright striked the video and got it removed. This set a precedent for all future discussion on the problematic figure online, so much so that when Rip Van Shaw spoke on him a year later, he rarely had a negative thing to say for fear of enraging the XG20 something. But hey, no hate to him whatsoever, he actually makes awesome videos that you should go check out if you haven't already, but he probably just didn't want to deal with the bullshit of getting his video taken down by somebody who just can't take criticism whatsoever, but that's the life of being a YouTuber, I guess. Things didn't end there, because the plot thickened even further when another YouTuber dropped a video supposedly exposing Cemetery as being Swamp Stories. Which if you don't know, Swamp Stories is another YouTuber who talks about gang-related politics in his videos, and the supposed proof that proves that Cemetery actually is him is that Swamp Stories posted a poster for an upcoming Cemetery show that wasn't announced yet. Somehow that video caught the attention of No Jumper that further discussed the topic, signal boosting it out of the realm of Cemetery's control. So is it true? Is Cemetery actually Swamp Stories? Well, I'm not sure, but Famous Criminals definitely seems to think that it's true, but most of the people in my Discord server don't believe it. All I can say is that Cemetery better not be Swamp Stories, because Swamp is one of the biggest shit talkers in the YouTube game and has gone after some pretty violent people like Crip Mac. If it's found out that some guy who talks shit all day on his YouTube channel also takes down critical videos about himself off the site, that's not going to be a good look whatsoever. But either way, all this drama hasn't stopped Cemetery from dropping a few more EPs in 2023 called King of the Graveyard and Splatterhouse, and the latter of these actually got a pretty good review from Fantano. Meanwhile, it gives Ken Carson ones and twos, but whatever, I digress. The past few months, Cemetery has actually leveled up in the world and managed to get himself on the Great A tour, alongside big acts like Ghost Main and City Morgue. But the fan turnout for these shows has been dog water, leading many to clown on Cemetery, claiming he's the perfect snack break during the tour. And even worse than that, there's actually been a recent video spreading online of Cemetery slapping a phone out of one of his fans' hands in a very disrespectful way, although there's probably no respectful way to slap a phone out of somebody's hands. And all that goes to show that he mostly only gets spoken on for everything besides his music, but that's not to say that he's not doing okay musically, because he did just recently get a Montreality interview with the rest of Haunted Mounds, so I guess he has some appeal in the game. So after looking at all the information surrounding this guy, all I have to say is that he really needs to humble himself, because he's done a really good job finding his own weird little chewed up piece of the rap game, and he's managing to maintain it pretty well, growing his influence every day. But with all these stories coming out about him claiming he's a weirdo or a dickhead or that he can't take criticism about himself and he takes down people's videos that are negative about him, well, it's going to be a struggle to find some new fans. And with the fan Cemetery has right now, looking for a new audience might be a good idea. But that's a topic for another day because I'm not looking to catch a weird ass beating from any Cemetery fans that might be hiding under my stairs with the rest of the forgotten food bits, so for now, I'm just gonna leave it where it is. No, but for real, it's all satire, we're just having a good time here. I know I poked a lot of fun at Cemetery and his fans, but overall, we're just having a good time here, you know? And I know you guys are tough, you can take it. But for real, I really do hope that Cemetery can grow as an artist and a person because overall, even though it's not my cup of tea, I definitely think that his music is unique and I think we need more of that in the rap game. So if he can just kind of clean up his act a little bit, he'll be a better person for it, I'll be a better person for it, we'll all be better people for it, and overall, it'll be great. So shout out Night, I mean, shout out Dagger Clan. Yeah, and he pissed off Cemetery fans as Dagger Clan. Leave a dagger emoji in the comments below. Follow me on Instagram if you want to talk, unless you want to kill me. Uh, join my Discord server, and if you want to interview on the second channel, anybody who's up for that shit, Twisted Society, it's over there.
there. So get on it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Talk to you next time. Bye. Oh yeah, and shout out to Max Mofo, Simeon Jimmy, and Lil Peep. Okay, peace.